Inspector, you enjoy your day off? <coughs> yeah, nothing like a relaxing day of fishing. <coughs> fishing poles are for geeks, Major. <coughs> hey, put a cork in it, will you, loser? Inspector, what's going on? <coughs> An illegal chokehold, Major. Nah, nah, what's the charge against this guy? Oh, that. How you doing, Jerome? Oh, hi, Fred. How's your day off? We had a very good time. We? Who'd you go with? My best friend. You know, those experts are right about fish. Yeah, how's that? They're full of lead. What, are you tapping into the computer dating service again, Darrell? No. No, these are crimes that occurred over the last 10 years. By cross-referencing these crimes with recent crimes, the computer can catch similar M.O.s and give us fresh leads. That's poppycock. Cops catch crooks, not wimpy computers. Poppycock. It's poppycock. I never say that. Ah! Hammer! Hammer! You know that man you just dragged in? Yeah. You can't arrest someone just because you were getting bad vibes. Captain, I cannot believe that I'm hearing you say this. You of all people should know that it's intuition, instinct, hunches that crack cases. That man was crouching in a shooting position. Hammer! The man was watering his lawn. Well, every system breaks down now and then. If that would have been a flamethrower, you'd be thanking me right now. Sledge, that's my point. If you use standard police procedure, situations like this wouldn't happen. Well, would you call getting a gut feeling about somebody and then blowing them away good police work? No, I'd call that the process of elimination. Hammer! Ooh, your temples are really throbbing. I don't care what you do. I do care. Just get out to the university, please. I'm already taking an adult education class in philosophy. Really? Who? Kierkegaard? Spinoza? Jack Webb. Henry. Security police has just found a co-ed's dead body. Get going. Well, I guess we're really not in that much of a hurry, right? I mean, she's not going anywhere. Sledge, we should dead. go. Please. Go. I'm a fool for that. Just go. Just go. Just, just, please, go! All right, let's see whose method works best. Standard police procedure or your jungle tactics? You don't knock the jungle. Any place that gave the world malaria can't be all bad. Oh, please, let's not argue. I, I just don't think I could take another one of your nihilistic tirades today. Now, stop putting yourself down. You can handle a lot more than you give yourself credit for. All right, stop gawking. Come on. Just one of your friends brutally murdered. Come with me, guys. Yeah, what you got on the stiff set there, Norman? Uh, her name is... I never know what the proper word is. Is it she is or she was because she's dead. You can take notes on this, Hammer? Yeah, you take notes if you want to, Duro. I just store all that junk right here. What was her name? Janet Parker. She was strangled. Been dead about two hours. Yeah, she was found by that guy over there. He dead, too? No, he's just old. His, his name's Amos McCoy. He's the history professor. She was his teaching assistant. Uh, it's, it's a shame. She looked like my type. Well, so long. Thanks, Norman. Sure. Spellman, Shapiro, get out of here. I'll take care of this by myself. Uh, Professor McCoy, I'm Inspector Hammer. This is Detective DeRoe. We understand you are a history professor here at the university. I also understand you found Janet Parker's body. And I also understand that she was your teaching assistant. I know all this stuff already. This guy's no help. I'm going to go question one of the bangles over here. Professor, would you mind telling me how you happen to be here? Janet missed two of my classes. She'd never do that without a good excuse. I guess death is one of the best. Uh, what can you girls tell me about Janet Parker? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, all right. Okay, no, one at a time. Thank you. Yes. Yes, we were very close. I guess it was because she had no family. Poor girl. She was paying her own way through school. And now, 
No, if you don't mind, I, I must go home and deal with this. Oh, yes, of course. I'm sorry, this must be a very tragic day for you. It is. Now I'm going to be up all night, grading papers. Goodbye, Detective. Well, did you girls used to hang out together? No. Jenna was a real loner. She usually kept to herself. I only saw her come and go. Huh. A loner, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Did you notice anything strange lately? As a matter of fact, I did. Her new haircut was too full for the shape of her face. Oh, God. I mean, like, Okay, let's just go over what we have so far. She was a loner. That's... Yeah, she didn't talk to anybody except her boyfriend. What was his name? He's a quarterback on the football yeah, team. Yeah, what's his name? What a dog. What was his name? Teddy Overman. Now we're getting somewhere. Hey, Duro, I think I got... Duro. Hey, this is no time to be doodling. Did you find anything? Only the name of the murderer. You mean possible suspect? Yeah, okay, possible, whatever. I got a criminal. What do you got? Oh, I got this number on this pad. I picked up stone. Yeah, looks great, like... great. Put the handcuffs on the notepad. You know, I also think whoever killed Janet wanted something. Look at this place. It was robbed. Wrong. All girls' rooms look like this. No, she had a boyfriend. He was a football player. Those goons are born killers. You take a 280-pound man and stick him in a 10-pound helmet, you got homicidal intent. And I'm going to pick him up right now before he kills again. Sledge. Sledge. Oh, Did it ever occur to you you might be jumping the gun? Yeah. This guy's about to be drafted from state U to state Penn. Andy Overman? Hut! Police. You're under arrest for murder. What? Who'd I kill? Janet Parker. Oh my God, Janet's dead? Well, if you killed her, of course she's dead. Obviously, you're not here on an academic scholarship. Sledge, I think this is premature. I didn't kill Janet. I loved her. Oh, yeah? Then why were you running? I'm in a football game. Huh. I was at practice all day. Besides, I haven't seen Janet in months. She was too busy working on her research project. Yeah, and your big dumb jock ego couldn't take it, so you killed her, didn't you? You're supposed to hurt the one you love, not murder him. No way. Our relationship wasn't based on passion. It was mostly fiscal. That's physical, you missing link. No, fiscal. She was loaded and she spent money on me. All right, enough chit-chat. You're under arrest. Sledge, wait. He's got a solid alibi. What have you got? A hunch. All right, pigskin. But just remember, you're still suspecto numero uno. Every breath you take, every move you make, I'll be watching you. That's police talk. Now get out. Hey, Teddy. Moves. Teddy was right. Look at her bank account. She deposited $20,000 the day before she died. So where does a teaching assistant get that kind of money? Wheel of Fortune? Maybe she has rich parents. Well, the professor said she didn't have any family. 
Hey, don't try to dazzle me with the facts, Tarot. It was the boyfriend, and that's a cop talking. You lose. Hey, Detective, I almost forgot the lab report on this stone. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's worth $50,000. Oh, here it is. twinge in my stomach every time you come through that door. Well, whose fault is that, sir? You let me in. You could have resisted. Nobody's holding a gun to your head. Hammer, just tell me the status of the co-ed murder case. Well, the victim, of course, is still dead. But I think I got it wrapped up. The boyfriend killed her. It was a crime of passion. These kids nowadays, they just don't understand the give and take of a romantic relationship. If that's so, Hammer, and the case is closed. Why is Doro in the outer office questioning a jeweler? What? Hey, Doro. Letting that killer jock waltz out of here was dumb. But bringing in this sleaze who bought Janet's jewels is the height of dumbness. Now talk, pork products, or I'll kick the rhinestones off your pants. Hammer, this man is not a fence. This is the jeweler, Jerry Begg. His number was written on the pad on Janet's desk. The young lady sold items of antique jewelry to me in a perfectly legal manner. Now release me at once. Oh! Antique jewelry, huh, Sparkles? Now I guess you're going to tell us it's just all cut glass, not worth stealing. Oh, no, no, no. On the contrary, this stone alone is worth $50,000. A necklace made entirely like that would go for about $200,000. What do you think of that, Inspector Hammerhead? The name is Hammer, Tinkerbell. Uh, Mr. Begg, uh, did you ever wonder where Janet got such expensive jewelry? Oh, of course, I wondered. I mean, wouldn't you? But you know, I wanted to ask her, but the client jeweler relationship is sacred. Rule one of my policy is never. Never to ask questions. What's rule two? No shirt, no shoes, no service. Ah, uh, Mr. Begg, thank you very much. You've been very helpful. Ah, uh, thank you, Miss Dollar. It's been a pleasure. Uh, by the way, if uh, you should ever like now, I have some earrings that would accentuate those glorious lobes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Freak. Well, huh? What do you think of Janet having all that expensive jewelry now? Might have something to do with the case. To a certain extent, maybe. A little. In other words, good job, Duro. Don't go crazy, Duro. All this means is that Teddy killed Janet Parker out of greed as well as passion. The case is still closed. Yeah, but we still don't know where she got the jewels. So maybe the professor can help us out. You know what you're gonna get out of him? Right. Nothing. Nix. Nada. Zero. Zilch. Niente. Air. A black hole. Bookus. Okay, this is such a wild goose chase. Why'd you come? There's a great gun shop around the corner. They're having a spring clearance on landmines. Yes, may I help you? I'm Detective DeRoe. This is Inspector Hammer. I called earlier. Yes, of course. The professor's expecting you. Won't you come in? Thank you. Professor McCoy is in his... Dad, don't tell me. He's in his study. No. He felt a study was too mundane. He calls it a rumpus room. He's right in here. Detectives. Welcome to my study. You mean rumpus room. Oh, oh that Frida. 
always kidding the guests. She loves it. Oh, please, please, please have a seat. Well, I hope you've come to tell me you found Janet's killer. She was so young and bright. Who could have done such a thing? The killer. How did I get to be a professor? Actually, we're here because we need more information. We? Far away. We discovered that Janet was selling some very expensive pieces of jewelry. So? So, don't you find it peculiar that a girl who is supposedly working her way through college would own such a cash? No, not really. College kids today, um, they have uh, designer clothes, uh, mutual funds, uh, beamers. Who knows where they get the money? No, 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 no. Janet never mentioned anything about uh, jewels. Maybe they were the family heirlooms, hmm? Look, we're getting nowhere with this. Come on, let's go. If I leave now, I can still see something bad on the fourth network. I understand Janet was working very hard on a research project. Do you have any idea what she was investigating? Yes. She was fascinated with the Third Reich, especially Hitler's top men, Himmler, Goering, von Feldheimer. Excuse me, Professor. Inspector Hammer has a phone call. I love getting called out of class. Von Feldheimer. Was he a lower echelon officer of the Luftwaffe? Major Johann von Feldheimer shot down more pilots than the famous American ace Stoddard. He was one of Hitler's favorites. What do you think happened to him? Experts believe he is dead. Hammer here. Speak to me. Inspector Hammer, it's Teddy Overman. Officer Major told me I could reach you there. Look, I just found something in my locker that I, that I forgot I had. Janet gave it to me a while ago for safekeeping. I think it's real important. Can you meet me in the locker room right away? Yeah, sure, I'll be right there. Hey, Frida, you look like you'd know. Where's the men's locker room? Yes, Janet had great potential. She was a brilliant researcher, and she looked dynamite in tight jeans. It's Teddy Overman. He says he's got important evidence. He's just trying to dig himself out. I'm going over. I'm coming with you. Uh, Professor, thank you for your time. Oh, you're quite welcome. I hope you bring this terrible person to justice. Thanks, Bones. I mean, McCoy. Teddy? Teddy! Teddy! Hey! Oh. Dang it! If that loony mate hadn't given us the wrong directions, we'd have been here sooner. Now he's probably out there strangling another co-ed. Dang it! Hammer, I can guarantee you he's not out there. Yeah, how's that? He's in here. There's a note. I'm sorry I murdered Janet. As you can see, I killed myself. Guiltily yours, Teddy. I guess remorse finally got the best of him. This case is closed, Darrell. I win. You were too tentative. You see a guy you know is guilty, and you throw him in the slap. Now, that's good police work. Hammer, think about it. Who gave us the wrong directions? Who knew we were coming here? Now it's obvious. I never knew you were a poor loser, Darrell. I'm going back to the precinct to file my report. Freda, I must see the professor. I'm sorry, the professor cannot be disturbed. The professor is disturbed. Should I say Major von Feldheimer? 
Guess you were pretty chummy with Hitler, huh? This is very incriminating evidence. Yeah. And now I know how Gary Hart felt. Oh, speaking with an accent now? No, no, this is no accent. Before, that was an accent. Janet was a brilliant researcher. She found out the real McCoy was a Nazi. But instead of turning you over to the authorities, she blackmailed you for the jewels you smuggled. The greedy little brat. And she had a minor in economics. There's still one thing I don't understand, Professor. How a feeble old man like you could kill Janet and Teddy. No, 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 I did not do it. It was Frieda there who did it. One's for you, bud. Never. Professor's getting away. What's that? The Major's neighbor owns a pit bull. Well, let's let him chew for a while. Dogs need exercise or they get testy. Never. That's a man out there. Get... All right. Sit! So if you thought I was wrong about the professor, why'd you come back? Because there was a thin, very thin possibility that you were a little right. Enough acquiescing. Fine, fine by the book police work, Doro. You should be very proud of yourself. <laughs> Janet Parker bled Von Feldheimer dry. And with his Nazi spoils gone, he had to kill to protect his secret. These Nazis are such extremists. Why didn't he just flunk her? Uh, actually, sir, you know, Hammer does deserve some of this credit. No, I mean, it was a combination of, of gut instinct and standard procedure that cracked the case. Well, I have to admit it, uh, some of Sledge's methods are valid. Well, I have to admit, I was on the scent from the beginning, sir. That's because I'm a cop. A special breed of cat. The eye of an eagle, the heart of a lion, the guts of a mongoose. Let's face it, a cop is a one-man zoo with a gun. 